ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Western Racing, and I apologize for the crappy setup here at the beginning. I don't know why this looks so bad. I, this is the same way I set up every video, but anyway, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Series 1 of the Hot Wheels 2023 Fast and Furious Special Series, or themed series. They did four no, they did not four. I think they did three series of these. Each series has 10 cars in it, which means they did 30 Fast and the Furious cars last year. I found the entire first series and three cars from the third series. I missed everything else, which means I'm going to have to go back and find all those now. But anyway, yeah, that's going to be the point of today's video. The way that this works is they basically did three waves of cars, 10 cars in each one. One car from each movie. So... We're going to go in order because that's, you know, what the, what, how it works, how Hot Wheels did it. Um, we're going to look at one, excuse me. We're going to look at one car from every single movie today. There's 10 movies, one car from each of them, uh, excluding Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw does not have any entries into this. And I don't think, has the sequel to that movie come out yet? I don't think it has. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at one car from every movie. And I think it's pretty cool, the choices that they made for the cars that they did. I will admit, you know, there were some choices. If they Series 1, I think, should have been just the most iconic car from each movie. So, like, Fast and the Furious 1 should have been the Supra or the Challenger. Fast and the Furious 2 should have been the Skyline. Furious 7, I do think they nailed that one. That, in my opinion, is the most iconic car from that entire movie. It's also my favorite car in the entire franchise, but we don't. that doesn't matter. Um... And there are some good choices like uh, The Fate of the Furious. They chose the Ice Charger, which that one I think is a very genius choice because that one's just probably the most iconic car from that entire film. But anyway, yeah, that's all I got to say. Fast and the Furious 6, I do think that one's a good choice as well. They could have done the DB5. That one would have made sense. Or no, DB5 was the fifth movie, right? No. Sixth? Yeah. No, it's the sixth movie. I think it was the sixth movie. Anyway, that's not... No, it was the fifth movie. Okay, doesn't matter. I haven't actually... I don't actually remember most of the movies in the series. There are some of them that I remember, like Too Fast, Too Furious, and Furious 7. Those ones I have committed to heart. The rest of these, yeah, it's going to be a crapshoot whether or not I remember what where they're from or anything. But anyway, because this is a special series, I'm going to attempt to use acetone to open all of these. So this might be a little bit of a... Uh, Edit, heavy, heavily edited video because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in between each one as I open them. But anyway, as you can see, I've left one car on screen and that is the one we're going to start with. We're going to go in order by movie. As I said, it's starting off with The Fast and the Furious. We have the 1995 Mitsubishi Eclipse. I got to say, this is a pretty solid choice for the first movie because this car is pretty dang cool. And I got to say, I do think the cars in this one all around are pretty cool, even if I don't remember where they're from. All righty, here we go. The first car is out of the package. You do not know how happy I am to be opening these. These things have been sitting on my shelf for a while now, just waiting to be open. And I gotta say, the card art that they did for this set is actually pretty good. I really like the card art this time around. But anyway, here it is, the car, the Mitsubishi Eclipse. 1995, I do believe, is what that said, if I'm not mistaken. Got to get the zoom just right. All right, there we go. So here it is, the 1995 Mitsubishi Eclipse. Really beautiful car. Love the toxic green body. We got a black chassis, black tires with silver rims and smoked window inserts. All around, just a pretty good design for the car. I really do like this. Uh, I don't even know what you would call this little paint. I've Okay, I've always wondered why the cars in the movies always just have the most random janky designs on the side of it. I don't know what that is. I, again, I might just be on culture, but I have no clue what you would even call this on the side. It has a paint job on the side, we'll put it that way, and it's mirrored on the other side as well. Like I said, no clue what that is. The front end has the two headlights, which look really cool. I love the way that that looks. And then the hood here has this really like cool mesh paint job here. I've seen this on a few cars and I've never understood what the whole deal with it is. It looks neat, don't get me wrong. It just, it's it, it only works on some cars. The top here has some really cool paint splatter with the blue. And then on the back end, we have the full tail light with the Mitsubishi emblem. And then if you look on the back there, you can see the uh, license plate there, which I can't really read what that says. It says, Montana, maybe? 
Arizona. I think it says Arizona RNO263, which I think is literally a direct reference to the movie. But the car actually says that. Oh, and I didn't show the bottom. My bad. Here's the bottom of the car for everybody who's curious. I always show that off in my videos. But anyway, there is our first car from Fast and the Furious 1, the 95 Mitsubishi Eclipse. That does say Arizona. I was right. All right, so there you go. That is our first car for today's video. Not a bad way to start it off. But let's move on, shall we, to Too Fast, Too Furious, my favorite movie out of them all. And we're going to be taking a look at the 1970 Dodge Hemi Challenger. I do not remember this car. I take that back. I do remember this car. I'm going to make myself look like an idiot because I just said that this is my favorite movie and I really don't remember where this car comes into play. And that sucks. Part of me wants to say it's the scene where they, you know, got the eject buttons. I think that's where I remember this car being. I have not. I literally haven't watched these movies in so long. I do not remember. This, for some reason, this car just reminds me of that eject button scene. Maybe that's where it's from. I don't know. You guys can feel free to roast me in the comments. I have not been following the movies, but uh, yeah, here we go. Let's get this one open. Alrighty, everybody. Here we go. Let's pull it out. This is a Hot Wheels casting that I really like in general, so this is, it's cool to see another version of this car here. But here it is. It's pretty simple in general. Not, it's not like Hot Wheels went too nuts with this one, but uh, yeah. So here we go. We got an orange body, a black chassis, black tires with silver rims, and a blacked out uh, windshield. And a back uh, wind, windscreen as well, I guess is what you could call it. The side panel has a silver doorknob or door handle and a uh, silver gas canister uh, opening right there. Gas hinge door latch. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, this side is exactly the same, but mirrored. It's just missing the whole gas setup. All of the detail is on the front end here where you can see the uh, reflectors right there, which look really cool. And the headlights. I always love what Hot Wheels does in the headlights and everything. It just it really adds to the look of the car. Uh, up top, we have a racing stripe, which is not centered on the hood, but that's okay. I can overlook that. And on the back end, we got the really cool tail lights set up and everything with the tailpipes. Really, really cool. There is the bottom. So there you go, everybody. That is our second car for today's video. The 70 Dodge uh, Hemi Challenger really good i really like that casting that is a really nice casting i'd honestly say that's in top 10 for my top 10 favorite hot wheels castings that one's up there all righty now for what is probably regarded as the number one fast and the furious movie every i've heard this one's pretty much the fan favorite and it is of course the legendary the fast and the furious tokyo drift and the car that we're looking at is the nissan silvia 515 or 515 whatever you want to call it this car right here looks phenomenal in die cast form i absolutely love the way this car looks so good so beautiful and i'm ready to get it out of the package all righty i didn't do a too good of a job getting the blister off of that one but that's okay it does i do like doing the acetone for the special editions because i i don't want to rip the full package off and everything a couple of marks here and there is fine but you know i don't want to get that big old mess going on there it would be nice if I could get them all perfect, though, but that takes a lot of acetone, a lot of time and technique that I don't have. So for the body, we have a really, really dark blue, which looks really good. A blue chassis, believe it or not. Black tires with silver rims and blacked out window inserts. You actually can... Okay, you can see the inside of the car. It's just really hard to see. Like, that is some severely tinted windows. Um... The side panel has this really big orange stripe with two small silver stripes. Pretty cool there. You have the same thing going on on this side, but we've got some uh, reflectors on the side as well that I missed originally. The front end has the uh, the Silvia logo here. I think that's what that is. The Nissan Silvia. The Silvia has a specific logo to it, and that's that right there. Emblem, rather. Headlights. And then the back end has a spoiler. The Nissan Silvia... Uh, in uh, writing on there which looks really cool and then we got the tail lights reflectors and reverse lights which looks really good here is the top or the bottom rather and that is pretty much the entirety of that car right there really solid i really do think that one turned out really good i am a huge fan of that car very very quality detail put into that one now it's time once again we throw it back to the olden days and what i'm noticing here is that the order in which these cars are done, it kind of feels like they're doing a, you know, 
a, a very interesting way of doing it. It feels like they're doing a Japanese car, then an American car, Japanese car, American car. I do. Th it kind of seems like they're doing that kind of style here. So, as you would imagine, we're doing an American car next for Fast and Furious, which is the fourth movie. And we've got the 1972 Ford Gran Torino Sport. I love this car. There is just something about this car that I fall in love with every time I see it. It is just such a beautiful looking car. I, I Like I said, I absolutely love it. All right, let's get it open. Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. I made a very large mistake. I set the car blister back down on the package and it re-glued itself to the uh, to the card. I already screwed this one up bad enough, so I'm not too torn apart by that, but uh, yeah. Long story short, do not set the blister back down on the card while the, glue, while the uh, acetone is still in place. Because what the acetone does is that it dissolves the glue. But when you dissolve something and then, you know, the object that you used as your solvent disappears, the thing that you, your solute, the thing that you were dissolving, just reappears. So if your acetone evaporates, your glue just turns back into glue. And that's a good thing to keep in mind anyways. So a great example of this is if you put salt in water, the salt will dissolve. But if you evaporate the water, the salt will just come back. It, it literally just reforms back into salt. Same thing works for sugar too. Anyway, here is the uh, the car here, the Gran Torino Sport. And I gotta say, love the candy apple green here with the glitter. That is a lot of glitter, holy crap. Um, we've got a candy apple green body, a candy apple green chassis, black tires with silver rims and smoked window inserts. The side panel features this white stripe that goes down the whole distance, red reflector in the back, normal reflector up front, orange I mean, uh, perfectly mirrored front to back on the other side. The grill is blacked out. We got the white headlights, which look really cool, as well as the two reflectors. Very, very nice. And then the back end has the two taillights. I would have liked to have seen a uh, license plate on either the front or the back. That would have been really cool to see, but I guess that's all right. And uh, yeah, that is the entirety of that car. We're trying to, I'm trying to keep things fast here, guys. That's why I'm talking so quick. Just trying to keep things nice and flowy. We got 10 cars and we're now on car number five. For the movie Fast Five, it is quite literally just the most simple car in the world, the Toyota Supra. Is that a Supra? Yes, it is. Alrighty, why is my head itchy? Okay, <laughs> sometimes I feel like some things need to be cut out of the video, and sometimes I think it's just fine to leave it in. But anyway, here is our Toyota Supra, the legendary car itself. Everybody loves Supras. Holy crap, that is a dark black paint scheme. Good God. So we've got a black body, black chassis, black tires with silver rims, and blacked out window inserts. Oh my god, that is pitch black as the night. The side panel only features a reflector right there, and that is the same to say on this side as well. All of the detail is on the front, where we've got the Toyota emblem with the two headlights and the grill. The hood, which has these two painted in vents. These are supposed to be vents, but they're not actually on the casting itself, so they just painted them on. Then of course the back end's got the rest of the detail with the Toyota emblem, the Supra emblem, and then the really famous Supra taillight setup with the two blinkers, the or with two blinkers, four uh, brake lights, and then the two reverse lights on the bottom. And there you go, everybody. That is the ever famous, ever amazing Toyota Supra. Can't go wrong with a Toyota Supra. If anybody, if there was anything that made the Toyota Supra iconic, it was definitely the Fast and the Furious movies. Everybody knows the Paul Walker Supra in the first movie is one of the most iconic vehicles in all of Hollywood history. Just downright crazy. Now, this one's actually really interesting because I actually vaguely remember this car. The funny thing is, is that I don't remember it being in Fast and the Furious 6. I remember it in the seventh movie, weirdly enough. And now that I think about it, I don't think it was in the seventh movie. But like I said... I remember it being in the seventh movie, and I know that's not correct. Anyway, Fast and Furious 6 brought us the 1970 Ford Escort RS1600. Um, also, I also just learned recently, this car, the 1970 Ford, or yeah, obviously 1970, but the Ford Escort RS1600, I thought this car was a lot newer. When I read 1970, I was like, oh my God, this car's old 
this car is really old. Like, I really did not think this thing was from the 1970s until I saw this and it said it on there. I was like, oh my god, that is insane. Because I thought this was like 80s, 90s for some reason. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing out of the package and uh, take a look at it. Alrighty, here we go. Let's take a look at this thing. The Ford Escort RS1600. I This is one of those cars, one of those castings that I have so many variations of in my collection. It's ridiculous. I'm sure as collectors, we all can uh, admit that when you get to a point where you don't really collect specific models and you just go and collect things, you know, like what I do, that's kind of what I do. I don't really collect specific models. I just grab whatever I can. There starts to get to a point in your collection where you look at, uh, at your collection and you're just like, wow, there are specific castings that I have a crap ton of variations of for no reason. This is one of those. I don't even like this casting. And this is probably one of the, has the highest count, if not top five for highest amount of a car that I have in my collection. And like I said, I don't even like this casting. It's just everywhere in my collection for some reason. But anyway, baby blue body, baby blue chassis, black tires with gold rims, and we got the darkened window insert there. Like the uh, Ford Grand Torino, we got a white stripe down the side. It's pretty much the only detail on the side panels. The front end has a lot of detail. I wish they would have painted in the little headlights here, the little uh, rally lights. That would have been really cool. But we got the two headlights the girls painted in, and we got the two reflectors. This really cool white stripe right here says Ford. And then we've got, I, is that a tachometer? I don't know what that is. Hold on. You guys see that right there? Just this little emblem. I don't know what that emblem is all about. It probably has some significance in the movie, maybe. I don't know. My I don't know why my brain immediately went to a tachometer, but, you know. Hey, got Pontiac on the brains, I guess. I do love Pontiac, by the way. Uh, here's the back end with the trunk. You got the uh, YLV7J license plate escort written on this little light stripe on the trunk. And then you've got the tail lights set up there, which looks really cool. Here is the bottom. And there you go, everybody. That is... The 1970 Ford Escort right there. Another one to add to my friggin' collection of like 70 plus of these. I don't know why I have, like I said, I really do not know why I have so many of that specific car. But you want to know a car I have no variants of until I open this? A car that I arguably would say is my favorite car from the entire Fast and the Furious franchise. Uh, Toretto's, uh, Toretto's Charger from the first movie pretty pretty cool car i really do like that car the supra from the first movie iconic breathtaking car the skyline from the second movie an amazing amazing car but none of them compare to this next car in my opinion this is my favorite car from all of fast and the furious and it's from furious 7 the 1970 dodge charger off-road this thing will go down in history as my favorite car from those from that entire movie series. Yes, it is a 1970s Dodge Charger, which is amazing, but it's built to go off-road. It is a Baja Charger. Is that not the greatest thing ever? I freaking love that. And it looks cool, too. It just downright looks amazing. I'm going to quit fangirling. Let's get this thing open so you guys can hear me gush about it for the next five hours. Alrighty, here we go. I am so excited. If I'm not mistaken, this car has working suspense. Oh, maybe not this specific version. Oh, no, it does. It does. Oh, my God. That's so cool. Okay, so... This car was released under the Xperia Motors a while back, and I never understood why this car would be released under Xperia Motors, because it's a movie car. It would make more sense under screen time. And it is because, and I don't know, I'm going to have my camera focus on it here, this car has working suspension in the back. Not in the front, but only in the back. The car has actual working suspension. Is that not the coolest thing ever? I really do feel like that is just downright awesome. So this car, as you can see there, look at that. That is so, I freaking love that. You take any of these other cars here and you drop them. It doesn't, you know, the car tumbles. This car, on the other hand, you drop it and it stabilizes. Well, all right, this is not a good demo, but it somewhat stabilizes itself because it has the suspension in the back, which is really cool. I like that a lot. Okay, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I know one of the versions of this car has working suspension. Anyway. Here it is, the 70 Dodge Char 1970 Dodge Charger Off-Road. This thing is a masterpiece. So, 
We have the black body, the black chassis, black tires with red rims, red bead blocks rather, excuse me. And then we've got the uh, blacked out windshield there. It looks really cool. Open sunroof too, which I think is really cool. Uh, I don't know what that's all about. I think he used that in the movie to get out of a car at one point or get in the car. You got the seat belt there. All around beautiful. Nothing on the side panel except for this little red stripe back here and the word Hemi. Same thing on this side, just, you know, different or, you know, uh, reflected rather. The front end, it just has the grill guard. There's no detail or headlights or anything up front, which I think is really strange. And I don't know what that's all about. Uh, I did notice just now, oh, it's the passenger seat that's got the sunroof. Okay, so I'd assume if he's got a passenger, that's how they get out of the car and go and do things, which is pretty cool. The back end here says Dodge, and it has the tail light, And then, of course, it has the two strapped-in tires, which give this thing weight in the back. All around, just a beautiful car. It's also got the Western Racing colors, which is another reason why I like it. Just an all-around beautiful car. I freaking love this thing so much. And there you go, everybody. That is the 1970s Dodge Charger Off-Road. I love that car so much. So cool. All right. Next up, we've got our final three cars here. Now we're getting to a gray area. I Fast and the Furious 7 was really the last movie I watched. So all of this is just based on pictures that I've seen from the movies. I've never actually seen these movies up to this point. So this is going to get really weird. And the next one that we got here is from Fast and the Furious 8, which is known as the Fate of the Furious. And this is the Ice Charger. And in that movie, I know there's a scene where they're on a glacier being chased by a submarine. And I do believe that this is one of the cars. I think this is the one that uh, Toretto drives. He drives the ice charger. And uh, which makes sense because Toretto always drives chargers. That's just his thing. But uh, yeah, this is the, it's a Dodge Charger that's built for the ice. And I really, yeah, I really don't know how to describe this. Let's get this thing open. All righty, everybody. Here we go the ice charger a very interesting car that i again another one i don't have any uh versions of just a very strange car in general so we've got a matte gray body a matte gray chassis black tires with silver rims and black uh window inserts uh the side panel only has one detail on it and it's this black stripe back here with the dodge charger rt logo on there flip over to this side it's the same thing but mirrored the front end has no detail on it. We've got a black racing stripe. One of the things I noticed here is that the windows appear to all be bolted down, which is really strange. And then the back end has the tail lights. And then really where most of the paint is, is on this back here. Um, I do not know what this is. Is this the motor? Is that the engine? Nah, yeah, that's not the engine. The engine be up front. I genuinely, if you guys could let me know in the comments, what is this back here? Because like I said, I haven't seen the movie. Is this like some sort of nos booster contraption is this a bomb like what is that that is really is this the flux capacitor i don't know what the heck that is that is weird here's the bottom there for the ice charger and that is pretty much all i'm going to show for that one because like i said i really don't know anything about it please if you guys know in the comments or if you guys know let me know in the comments what is this contraption back here that is really weird it's also got paint on it so it means it must be important but there you go that is the ice charger for the eighth movie Two more to go, everybody. Two more to go. Next up for uh, the Fast so or Fast Nine, aka the Fast Saga, is the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Now, this is another weird one because I I remember this car being in the eighth movie, and it says it's in the ninth movie. So again, this is another weird time where I'm just like, okay, I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway. This is also really interesting because I'm pretty sure this is the only truck in this entire... Well, no, there's an El Camino. Never mind. I thought this was the... This is pretty much the only, like, full-size truck that is in this entire series. So, let's get her open. Okay. I did a terrible job with that one. That one was just horrible. This one is heavy. This is a very heavy car right here. Working suspension, maybe? Does this one have working suspension? I'm going to go with no. This one does not have working suspension. I was just bending the axles, testing the rigidity. So that way it doesn't sound like I was just trying to break it, I guess. All right, here we go. We've got the same matte gray paint job, black chassis, black tires with black rims, and then blacked out window inserts. Pretty cool, not going to lie. The side panel uh, really doesn't have any detail other than the door handles and some Jeep uh, emblems on here. 
Uh, one of the things that I do think is cool though is that they detailed in the uh, different details on the side of the back there, which is pretty cool, the little cover. Uh, all of this stuff is mirrored except for this little uh, canopy piece back here, which is really cool because they modeled in uh, the little uh, stuck pads. I call them stuck pads. I don't know what they actually are, but it's like when you get stuck in the mud or something, you put these under your uh, tires so you can get traction. It's pretty cool the way those work. The front end has a winch on it and you got the Jeep grill there with the little vents. This top here is completely painted in and detailed, which is pretty cool. Uh, in the back, you can see some toolboxes and stuff. Jeep logo there, and then you've got the tail light setups and everything in the back as well. Here is the bottom, and there you go. That is the 2020 Jeep Gladiator, the heaviest vehicle in this entire set for sure. But that is vehicle number nine. It is time for vehicle number 10 right here. The final car we're going to look at in today's video. I am checking my battery percentage because I'm getting pretty low here, so I'm going to have to work quickly. But anyway, this is the final car we're going to look at in today's video for Fast X or Fast 10 Part 1. It's a three-part movie, believe it or not. They're doing Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. They really don't want to end this series. But Fast 10, we have the 2020 Dodge Charger Hellcat. All right, guys, we're going to make this one quick here. Just going to get it done and over with. Get that out of the way. All right, here we go. Let's zoom in and just get this done real quick. I'm running out of battery. We're going to make this nice and speedy here. We got the black body, the black chassis, black tires with black rims and blacked out windows. So there's not a lot of detail on this one. We got some reflectors on the back fender and the front fender in orange. Same thing on this side, just mirrored. The front end has the grill painted in with the two headlights and the SRT Demon logo right there. And then the supercharger is showing out the top there, which is really cool that, I think that's a supercharger anyways, or the top of the engine is sticking out anyways, which is really cool. And then in the back we have Dodge with the tail lights set up right there that is the only detail on this entire car there is the bottom that is the entire car the final one for today's video we looked at all 10 let's close out the video
baby. There you go. That is all 10 of them together from left to right. I'm going to try and run through these real quick. We've got the, oh God, uh, we're going to run through them real quick here. I'm just going to use the card backs because it's easier that way. We've got the Mitsubishi Eclipse, the Nissan. Oh, God, they're out of order. Uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse, Dodge Challenger, Nissan Silvia, Ford Gran Torino, Toyota Supra, Ford Escort, Dodge Charger, Ice Charger, Jeep Gladiator, and the Dodge Charger Hellcat in order from left to right. That is all I've got for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed. And uh, the next video will not be an unboxing, but it will come out exactly one hour after this video. It's going to be a bit different. I'm going to try something brand new, and you guys might even get to see what I look like for the first time. So that'll be pretty cool. It won't be a full face reveal, though. But uh, yeah, that will be a thing that'll happen. So uh, hope you guys are content with only getting two unboxings this week. The third video I feel like needed to be done just because I needed, I needed to voice my opinions on something. I feel like people don't do that enough in the diecast community, so we need to see what's... I just wanted to get my opinions out there. If you don't agree with my opinions, that's fine. I just wanted to get them out there anyways. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you, and good night.